Well, good morning. Um, uh, Troy and Shauna are down visiting Cole. Uh, he's uh, in a play, producing, directing. Okay, that's the word. Um, a play down in Pepperdine, and so they are visiting him right now. Um, today's message is fairly simplistic, um, and also, this is, in, is not in my notes. However, uh, this morning, um, I was woken up a couple of times by some chaos that was happening outside, and uh, so at 5.15, I woke up, and I was just wide awake, and I did not go back to sleep, and so um, I was looking over the lesson, and there were a couple things in it that um, I actually ended up taking out, and uh, um, so it's a shorter message this morning, um, so um, yay for that, all right. <clears throat> uh, today's message is fairly simplistic uh, in that the whole time I've been pondering these three passages, uh, there's been just one resounding point, and that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. And uh, um, as you know, I have been working with young people for some time now, um, actually kind of a nearing a long time, uh, uh, more than 20 years, and uh, as we know, children behave like the adults that are around them, kind of with the exception of this age. Now, <clears throat> with the advent of TV, so I am a child of the 80s and 90s, uh, with the advent of the TV coming up, and um, uh, there's the common phrase of uh, letting the TV be the babysitter, right? Um, so with that, and now more, uh, especially more with portable computers, laptops, desktops, um, iPads, mobile devices, phones, there, um, the kids are being taught harmful things without the knowledge of the parents, really. It's a lot more easy to turn on something and watch it and for the parent just not to know like what exactly is being uh, taught essentially to their children. Whereas when I was a child, um, it was more easy to, for my parents to be listening in from the other room, the TV is on. And so this generation um, is, is unlike a time that we've experienced yet. Um, and so the, the training of the children is less um, focused through their parents. So the kids, now, now is time, um, they're, they're more capable of being different than their parents than ever before. Because as I said, uh, children behave like the adults around them, right? And so... <clears throat> Um, because of this, too many, uh, excuse me, because too many adults have not had the strength training in standing up for Christ and not being worried. Ooh, wait, hold on. I didn't see anything. I missed a sentence here. Let me, okay, pardon me. <clears throat> I did something weird. Okay. <clears throat> I apologize. Here, is it? Oh, no, I get it. Okay, all right. It's the next thing. All right. So the word sued came up, and I was not ready for it. It's in its net. All right. I changed some things. Thank you for your grace and mercy. All right. <clears throat> As now I'm in my 40s, um, I've witnessed uh, the focus of learning hard knock life lessons from that to, uh, so like a, for instance, drive down the road, you have a freshly poured hot cup of coffee, you know, back in the days before they had lids and all the travel cups and mugs and all that. <clears throat> Hard knock life, you hit, a, you hit a bump and you spill it on yourself. Ooh, shouldn't have filled my coffee mug too full. Right? Ow, it hurts. <laughs> you go on with your day. But, um, with time... Now, a hot coffee gets spilled on me, I sue McDonald's. That's the world we live in right now. 
Okay? So, because of this shift of mindset, people have been on the defensive, right? They don't want to be in trouble with the law, um, and so our culture, in effect, has softened. But now, the pendulum, you know, again, being that I'm in my 40s, I can see uh, before the suing nation, now the pendulum is starting to swing backwards. <clears throat> People are more willing to and able to stand up and standing out and being on the offensive move. <clears throat> and there is a clashing happening, um, and our youngest children are being able to witness this. <clears throat> so in our reading, if you've been following along, as so Troy likes to start out, if you've been following along in our reading, um, we saw that Jesus, we saw Jesus teaching, and so much of the time interacting with the public. And people were not only trying to sue Jesus, they were actually trying to take his life, to keep him from speaking. And within Matthew chapter 8, 19 and 20, we see a few of these in interactions with Jesus and the people, and with um, specifically dealing in marriage and dealing with children, and um, as parables of the workers in the vineyard. And we see that Jesus, the a phrase that comes up often, is kingdom. <clears throat> now let's turn to Acts chapter 20, verses 22 through 24. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Kingdom work. It seems as though it is a simple message. We ought to look at God's kingdom as, a both, as both a place to arrive and a place where we should be living right now. I make it a point to remind the young people I work with often <clears throat> that in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus asked for God's kingdom to come onto the earth as it is in heaven. Right, as he's teaching his disciples a prayer. <clears throat> to further to this point, the opposite of heaven is the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. It doesn't take much to understand what hell is. So if we look out the windows, if you stand out on the patio out here on the front steps, just look and listen. And you can hear and you can see what the torment that people are going through is. There are so many people who are not living in God's kingdom. They are not doing what is best for them. Now, heaven on earth, hell on earth. It is easy to see that. <clears throat> also, it's easy, really easy, to point out and say, at least I'm not like those sinners. Living in a tormented life, trying to self-medicate, to get away from whatever is uh, in their life. At least I'm not like them. So, a question. Whose kingdom do you reside in? The two options are either God's or not God's. I have a privilege of working with young people, and one of the things that I do is I co-coach track. 
<clears throat> and yesterday we were at a large, fairly large meet um, in Malala. And so there were uh, 12 teams, 12 other teams, um, and several of those being public schools. So it was a mixture of public and uh, private and um, Christian schools. And yesterday, while I was waiting for a race to get started, I was actually one of the officials for a relay race. And so while I was standing there waiting for the teams to get set up in their lanes for the relay race, <clears throat> um, I got to witness something amazing. In the midst of all the chaos that was going on in this track meet with kids trying to get ready and, you know, coaches uh, teaching their, you know, final instructions to their team, to their runners, um, there were four girls, not from Columbia, four girls from another school that huddled up and they said a prayer. And so, uh, and in their prayer, <clears throat> they prayed that God would, God would bless them they did it like right in front of me. Like I was only, you know, two arms lengths away. <clears throat> they, they prayed that God would bless them as they were witnesses to those around them. And that, um, they, that God would bless them as they put forth their bef best effort in the race. And I think he did. I think he blessed that team. <clears throat> we live in chaos and turmoil. So taking that analogy of all these things that are going around. We live, in a chaos, we live in chaos and turmoil. But we don't have to dwell in it. There was a time in this nation, um, this nation that I call home, where uh, when people were pitted against other people of this nation. Things were desperate, sad, and cruel. And during that time of desperation, God's people were able to sing things like, this world is not my home. And I've got a mansion. And amazing grace. These songs came into existence because of the world they lived in. <clears throat> and because of where they were going. God's kingdom is everlasting. He does offer freedom from sin and shame. And thank God that we don't have to dwell in the kingdom of the ruler of sin and shame. And thank God that we can be united with him, old and young alike as fellow heirs to his throne. There is, work, there is work at play in this world that is trying to soften, distort, and change God's kingdom. And more than that, it is observable to witness this. <clears throat> and in Galatians, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin, I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. The good news, the gospel. Jesus came to this earth to atone 
uh, came to this earth as atonement for us. He gave his body and his blood on the cross so that we can stand purified before God. We do not have to be a part of the world, though we are living here momentarily. God's kingdom is beyond what we can physically see, but also is a part of what we can physically see. And so as we take the communion, as we take the bread, and as we take the cup, we can remember this. We can remember <clears throat> that God's kingdom is now, is now, and forever. And we don't have to be bound by, we don't have to be bound by the chains of sin. We can be free. And thank God that we have freedom in Christ. Let us pray. <clears throat> God, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you that Jesus died on our behalf so we can be a clean people. We thank you for his body that was given for us. We thank you for our cleansing. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let us pray for the cup. God, we come before you again thanking you for Christ and his sacrifice. And Jesus, we thank you for offering your blood which has cleansed us. Thank you for covering us so that we can be with you. And as we take this cup, help this to remind us to be completely dedicated to you as you were to God in spite of what some may say. In Christ's name we pray, amen.